Welcome everyone. Today we are talking about paracetamol poisoning. Paracetamol is a very commonly available safe uh, painkiller that's available everywhere. That's why the rate of toxicity is very high. The overdose, many people take it to overdose themselves. So we will talk about pathophysiology, clinical feature, initial assessment, then what's the management, then what's the antidote, and what are the indications to send the patient for liver transplant. Coming to pathophysiology, paracetamol in therapeutic level is conjugated in the liver to an inactive substrate. So it will be uh, about, uh, become a non-toxic metabolite. Only about 1%, very small amount, metabolize it by cytochrome P450 system. So this will, uh, this will lead to production of a toxic metabolite called N-acetyl P benzoquinine which is inactivated by conjugation to glutathione uh, and then it becomes non-toxic metabolite. This is in therapeutic uh, metabolism. If overdose been taken, if the overdose been taken, the normal pathway of conjugation is saturated and then a greater proportion of uh, paracetamol is metabolized by cytochrome P450 system. Once the reverse of glutathione is depleted, then this NAPQI will lead to toxic metabolite and, and it will uh, injure the liver. It will lead to hepatic necrosis. So coming to clinical features, the clinical features often in the first day it is asymptomatic. But some patients may get nausea, vomiting, which usually settles within 24 hours. If the patient got right subcostal uh, pain it may, uh, and tenderness, it, it might suggest development of hepatic necrosis. If the patient develops loin pain, hematuria, proteinuria after uh, the first 24 hours, Usually, it indicates incipient renal failure. If the patient have hepatic necrosis, what the complications they will get? They will get jaundice, cerebral edema, hepatic encephalopathy, renal failure, hypoglycemia, infections, hemorrhage, also multi-organ failure. So this is usually happening after three to four days of the uh, starting of the symptoms. What initial assessment you do for the patient? Of course, you have to send for some investigations. The most importantly is parastamol level. So the parastamol level should be sent uh, in order to know whether the level is high or low, above the diagram or below the diagram. Calculate the ingested dose in milligram per kg uh, to work out uh, if, the, if there is a significant ingestion or not. All the paracetamol ingestions, more than 75 milligram per kg per 24 hour are significant. It doesn't mean that all 75 milligram per kg are toxic. Usually more than 150 milligram is regarded as toxic per kg, but uh, more than 75 is also significant. So you have to consider them for admission. If pregnant, Pre-pregnancy test is uh, used, not the actuality. For example, if someone is 60 kg and uh, during pregnancy their weight becomes 70 kg, you use the, the pre-pregnancy test, uh, the uh, weight. Disregard any additional kilos in excess of 110 kg uh, for obese patients. What investigations we send? We say you send for parastamol level. Usually, parastamol level should be sent after four hours from the ingestion because until then, it will not be elevated. INR and PT, in order to know if there is a coagulopathy, liver function test, usually uh, the ALT and AST will be raised more than 10,000, especially within second or third day, but, but it may start to raise within the first, uh, after 18 hours. Uh, renal function test, serum electrolyte, glucose also should be sent. So what is the management? The management depends on the timing of the ingestion. If the patient has taken the injection and came to hospital within less than one hour, what you do, 
uh, you have to do, uh, give them activated charcoal, 50 gram orally. In children, it's one gram per kg. Then you have to delay blood sampling, as we said, until four hours post ingestion. After four hours, obtain parastamol level and await for the result. If the patient came after one hour but less than four hours, you have to take blood sample uh, and uh, after four hours. So delay it until four hours, then parastamol level should be awaited. If between four to eight hours, take a blood sample. If you suspect that the results will come after eight hours, start in cysteine because if you give the n cysteine within the first eight hour, it will be hundred percent protective for the liver. But if you you see that the results will come before eight hour, so just await the result and then decide whether to give n cysteine or not. Between eight to twenty four hour, and uh, if less than 150 milligram await the blood test. If more than 150 milligram, uh, you have to start in a style 16 and send for investigations. If single ingestion and more than 24 hour, if there is sinus symptoms like jaundice, liver tenderness, start in a style 16 immediately and admit uh, the patient. Otherwise, if the patient have no symptoms and after, came after 24 hour, just await the results of investigation. If ingestion is staggered, what we mean by staggered? It means the ingestion being taken over longer than one hour. The patient uh, have taken two gram, and after two hour, three gram, and after, for example, five hour, take one gram. So this is called staggered overdose. So in this case, you have to start in a style system within one hour of the arrival of the patient and send for the blood samples. What is the antidote that being given? The antidote is n cysteine. n cysteine. if the patient came within 4 to 24 hours after single ingestion, paracetamol level is on or above the treatment line you have to give. More than 24 hours after single ingestion, paracetamol is detectable, then give. More than 4 hours and the paracetamol level is detectable, 10 mg per give. INR more than 1.3, ALT more than 5, 53, uh, you have to give. But because we don't have parastamol level, uh, patients who come to our emergency department, more than 75 milligram per kg, we usually start in a style cysteine regardless of the uh, level because we don't have drug level. So what are the regimes? We have oral and IV dose. The oral in a style cysteine is approved by FDA. Uh, dosing is 140 mg per kg dosing, then 70 mg per kg every 4 hours. This should be repeated 70 times. This regime needs 72 hours. It has, uh, many patients may vomit, many patients may stop taking it. The easier one is IV in a style cysteine. We have two types, 21 hour regime and 12 hour regime. What is 21 hour regime? Usually an ampoule of in a style cysteine one ampoule is 300 milligram. We calculate it by kg. For example, if a patient is 60 kg, you have to bring 60 ampoules. How to give? You give 150 milligram, uh, I mean 30 ampoule of the n style cysteine, you give it over one hour. Then another 150 milligram, it means another 30 ampoule, you have to give it over 20 hours. So this is the 21 hour regime. Another regime is the easier one, call it Scottish and Newcastle Estyle System Protocol, SNAP protocol. This SNAP protocol given over 12 hours. How it's given? One third of the dose, one third of the dose given over two hours. Then another two thirds given over 10 hours. It means, for example, if the patient is 60 kg, you have to bring 60 ampoules. You give 20 ampoules per one uh, per two hour, then another 40 ampoules per 10 hour. It means uh, overall you have to give it over 12 hours. 
There might be clinically significant anaphylactoid reactions happen in patients with IV and astyacystine in 30% of patients, especially with the 12-21 hour regime. The patient have nausea, vomiting, articarial rash, bronchospasm, flushing, angioedema, shogun, tachycardia. Most commonly, it happens within the first hour of infusion. It happens in, especially in women, in those with asthma, with atopy, with family history of allergy, with patients with low parastamol level. If the patient have got this complication, it doesn't mean that it is a contraindication to IV anastasystine. It is not a contraindication. Instead, simply you have to stop the infusion temporarily and then give 10 mg IV alarmine, chlorphenamine, and also an nebulized salbutamol 5 mg if the patient is having bronchospasm. And then what you do, you once the reaction has settled, start the first bag at half the rate. It means if you are if you want to give it over one hour, give it over two hours. And then give the second and third bag at the normal rate. So just stop the infusion, give alarmine, and then restart it slower. No need to give hydrocortisone, no role of steroid uh, in patients with anaphylactoid reaction in cases of anastylcysteine uh, anaphylactoid reaction. According to the King's College criteria, the patient should be referred to liver transplant unit if they got these features. First, if the patient have acidosis, if the patient have coagulopathy, if the patient have acute kidney injury, if the patient have hepatic, necro, hepatic encephalopathy grade 3 and 4. So as a summary, parastamol can be hepatotoxic, more than 75 mg per kg per 24 hour. And acetylcysteine, if given within the first hour, it will be 100% protective for the liver. And acetylcysteine can now be given over 12 hours instead of the previous 21 hour regime. Anaphylactoid reactions are common in acetylcysteine, treated simply with first stopping the infusion temporarily, giving IV alarmine, then restart the first pack in a slower rate. Patients with parastamol overdose who have acidosis, coagulopathy, kidney injury, hepatic encephalopathy, grade 3 and 4, should be referred for liver transplant unit. Thank you.